Psychotic depression occurs when a person who is depressed goes on to develop psychotic symptoms such as delusions, hallucinations and depressive stupor where a person, although conscious, becomes almost entirely unresponsive. I'm Dr Beth Colby, a psychiatrist in London. People with severe depression have a depressed mood, loss of interest and enjoyment in activities that they'd normally find enjoyable and reduced energy leading to increased fatigability and diminished activity with marked tiredness after even slight effort. The individual usually shows marked distress or agitation where they are unable to relax and sit still or are constantly fidgeting or retardation where their thoughts or actions are slowed down. People may have a very low self-esteem and feelings of uselessness or guilt and suicide is a distinct danger, particularly in severe cases. It is presumed that somatic syndrome will almost always be present. For a diagnosis of severe depression, as well as having the symptoms I've already described, individuals will have four of the following symptoms. Reduced concentration and attention, reduced self-esteem and self-confidence, ideas of guilt and unworthiness, bleak and pessimistic views of the future, ideas or acts of self-harm or suicide, disturbed sleep, disturbed appetite, and the depressive episode should usually last at least two weeks. Studies suggest that those who experience severe depression, 14.7 to 18.5% of these will go on to develop psychotic depression. As we do not know enough about the condition, it is impossible to predict who will get this. However, psychotic depression is more common as people get older. It is likely, though, that a specific combination of genes, such as those responsible for causing depressive symptoms, plus those responsible for causing psychotic symptoms, in combination with the environment, are responsible for the condition. In psychotic depression, the delusions are usually mood congruent. That is, the false beliefs reflect the depressed mood. These are usually negative, involving ideas of sin, guilt, poverty, hopelessness, failure, and the individual may believe that they've been responsible for a terrible crime or disasters, leading to increased anxiety and possible increased psychomotor agitation. The hallucinations are usually auditory or olfactory. The voices are usually defamatory or accusatory and the olfactory hallucinations include smells of rotting filth or decomposing flesh. Severe psychomotor retardation may progress to depressive stupor where although the person is conscious, aware and alert, they are emotionless and virtually unresponsive to stimuli except for intense stimuli such as pain. This is very uncommon now though due to modern treatments. A person may be so ill with psychotic depression that they require treatment in hospital, usually for their safety or for their health, including physical. Alternatively, they may be under the care of a home treatment team. The person will usually already be on antidepressant medication and antipsychotic medication will be commenced when the person experiences psychotic symptoms. This combination of antidepressant medication and antipsychotic medication has been shown to be significantly more effective than antidepressant medication or indeed antipsychotic medication on their own. ECT is a safe and highly effective treatment for those people who do not respond to medication. This includes those who have severe suicidal thoughts and also those who may be dehydrated due to decreased oral intake. However, after the ECT treatment, to prevent a recurrence of symptoms, a person will need to take ongoing treatment of antidepressants. Psychological therapies may be used, although when a person is very unwell, particularly with their concentration, it may be initially difficult to engage in this. Patients, of course, will need social support and close follow-up for monitoring of their condition. Thank you for listening. Bye for now.